We start off with a pale wash for the sky. It's kind of a muted purple that I have here for the sky. And this particular painting is not that suited for a watercolor painting. Um, it's a very colorful subject and the tonal differences in the painting is like very minimal. So this is more suited for an oil painting or an acrylic painting. But uh, I decided to paint this just because I really love the trees on the right. The particular green that I'm putting in needs to be part of the background. So it is tonally lighter and uh, it's less saturated compared to the green that I'll be putting in later to the foreground. So as you can see it's tonally similar to the sky and I'll drop in a bit of blue to denote the darker areas. Usually the color mix for the rocks are like very cool in nature, but uh, I still remember the color of the rocks to be pretty warm when I took this photo. Uh, so I have added a bit of alizarin crimson as well into the mix to make them look a bit warmer than the usual color that I mix for the rocks. Time to put in the water next, so I start with a bit of cobalt teal blue and add other bits of colors like cobalt blue and a bit of uh, royal blue as well. The water is again pretty pale and I'm trying to leave a few white bits for the waves far away from us and I'm quite happy with the color that I have come up for the water. I'm 
I'm just trying to cut around the people there. And I see a bit of a violet in the water as well. It's kind of a purple actually, so I'll mix a bit of cobalt violet with a bit of blue and just uh, drop it in wet on wet into the existing wash. It didn't quite work. So what has happened is the earlier wash has lost its saturation a bit because the purple and the blue that I put in have mixed together and kind of uh, become a muted color, but that's all right. I ideally should have waited for a little bit longer before I put in this violet. I usually start with the trunk of the trees and then put in the foliage uh, but uh, this time the, the trunk shape is uh, not a uh, continuous line it's broken in between by the leaves and branches so I'm just assuming where the trunks should be and putting in the uh, leaves and branches at the moment and as you can see i'm using an oval brush i rarely use it but i thought it uh, might look good for this particular type of tree and i'm kind of uh, getting the shape right i have painted one of the trees much darker than the other two uh, it is a bit dark in the reference photo as well but uh, i pushed it a bit further and made it a lot darker so that it uh, looks good if you look carefully all three uh, trees look a bit different to each other uh, the one in the middle is much warmer in co uh, color and the one on the left looks much darker than the other two
I'm just going to darken the water a bit. Uh, I feel it's too pale after I put in the rest of the painting. Um, should have done it a bit earlier uh, before I painted the trees. But uh, before I painted the trees it looked okay, but now I feel that it needs to be a bit darker. Yeah, now it looks much better and uh, kind of creating a nice transition from the dark into the background. Time to put in the figures. Uh, they are placed at an awkward place in the painting uh, with a lot of uh, a lot of complex shapes around the figures so they won't be able to like catch a lot of attention of the viewer but um, I feel that it is important to put in these figures as they will give us a good uh, indication of how tall these trees are and and pretty much the scale of all the other things around them. So hope you enjoyed this demo and uh, please do subscribe to my channel for more demos in the future if you have already not done so and uh, thanks for watching this particular video and hope to see you in another demo soon. Thank you.